Welcome to another example video for Chapter 4 of OpenStax Astronomy. This is going to be Example 4G, and I've just included an um, image of the slide itself where it has the question um, and a provided kind of starting point for our picture. So we have this block that is on an incline and it's being pulled up the incline with this angled force where this angle is here in the only two sides of a non yet a as of yet non-existent triangle and the incline itself is this 35 degree angle here so when we pull the block up friction is acting against our motion which means when we draw it in friction is acting down the ramp because we're trying to pull it up the ramp and so we have the starting point of the picture itself but as we've started to see and will continue to see, by far the most important part of Chapter 4 problems is drawing a free body diagram that is consistent and well, um, well laid out so that you're using it as a map for the rest of the problem. When we have an angled problem like this, we tilt our coordinate systems. So I draw it next to my free body diagram and indicate it here too. Along the ramp is our x direction, and so already in this picture we can indicate to ourselves that this is going to be the x component of our pull force. And then the other part of our tilted coordinate system is perpendicular to the ramp away from the ramp. So we draw it over in the free body diagram too to help us keep track of things. And in this case, the portion of the um, force that we're using that is perpendicular to the ramp looks like this, and it's pulling it upwards away from the ramp a little bit. So when we now see this triangle here, in our real picture, we can write out what it's going to look like in terms of sine and cosine, just so that it's really clear to us, uh, even before we get to the drawing that we're making, what part is sine and cosine for this applied pull force. All right, but let's start with the free body diagram. So we have our block here, and gravity is straight down. Gravity continues not to care if we're on a ramp or not. With this 10 kilogram block, we use 10 to make our numbers easy, 98 newtons. For this 10 kilogram block, that full force is straight downwards. But we are on a ramp, and so the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. If the ramp is at an angle like this, the normal force has to go perpendicular to that. And it helps us draw the components of the gravity force. We go away from the normal force is our step one. That's gravity in the y direction. And the step two is down the ramp. Always angled the same way that we've drawn it here. We are not extending this all the way out. The black line that we started with is our hypotenuse in the triangle that we've now drawn. And in that triangle, because we've drawn it correctly, away from the normal force and then down the ramp, this is where the ramp angle goes, the 35 degrees of the ramp itself. All right, so let's draw in our pull force. It's up at an angle, so F pull is 85 newtons but we have a component. We can draw the same kind of triangle over here, the one that is along the ramp uphill. So that component is 85 cosine 25 degrees and a component that is away from the ramp. That's 85 sine 25 degrees. All right, so this is a 25 degree angle. And then the last force that we're missing, we have gravity, because gravity's already always here. We have the pull force we were told about. We have the normal force because there's a surface involved. And the last thing in the problem here is the friction force, because we were also told about that force. 11 newtons down the ramp, but parallel to that ramp. All right. So we have dealt with all of the numbers given to us in the problem. We're now asking to find the acceleration, which is in the x direction, and we have to find the normal force, which we can see drawn in the y direction. 
So let's start with the acceleration. Every single chapter four problem uses the same general tool, F net equals MA, but we have to decide when we're using it in the X direction and when we're using it in the Y direction. Because the acceleration is along the ramp, so the acceleration is along the ramp, that's where we draw it. Up the ramp is now our positive direction because we want that to be in the direction of motion or in the direction of acceleration. So when we write out F net X, the only force of the three arrows here in our free body diagram that are in the X direction, the only force that is in the direction of acceleration is our Fx force, the X component of our pull. We have to subtract off the piece of gravity that is trying to pull us downhill, and we have to subtract off also friction, which is acting against us. All right, so we can write in the numbers that we have so far. 85 cosine 25 degrees. Over here, opposite the 35 degrees, this is gonna be the 98 that we got from below here, times the sine of 35 degrees. So 98 sine 35 degrees using our map. And the friction force is 11 newtons. The mass here is 10 kilograms times our unknown acceleration. You'll note that there's not a lot of algebra involved. We had to figure out the map. That's the huge part of the problem. But after that, it's just plugging in all of the hard work that we did into the right part of the equations. So I'll get all of this on the left side in my calculator. And I get 9.83 equals 10a. We divide both sides by 10. And we get that the acceleration right at the bottom here is 0 0.983 meters per second squared. So roughly one meter per second squared. But we keep three significant digits in our lecture portion. So this is a small acceleration, especially compared to the previous problem, but that's because we're trying to pull up a ramp instead of down it. So we are fighting against friction and we are fighting against gravity. In the previous example for F, we were working alongside gravity. Gravity was helping us and only friction was fighting against us. All right, so the first half of the problem is done. The second one, the normal force, we again start with the same general starting point of all problems, Newton's second law, and we note right away that in this particular case, the acceleration in the y direction is zero. We aren't going away from the ramp or into the ramp. We are sliding alongside it. And so there is no acceleration in the y direction specifically. This arrow goes along our tilted x direction. There is no component perpendicular to the ramp in the acceleration. So that means that this whole side is going to equal 0 because 10 times 0 is still 0. And for the y um, forces, we look at our map again. We have three forces that are color-coded blue here that are in our tilted y direction. We have the normal force, and in the same direction as the normal force, we have Fy, and in the opposite direction, so opposite sign, we have Fgy. And apparently we have a motorcycle. All right, so we have in our picture, we could have done this already, that the Y component of gravity is 98 cosine 35 degrees. All right, so normal force is what we're solving for. The y component of our force here is 85 sine 25 degrees. The y component of our gravity here is 98 cosine 35 degrees. That all equals zero. So we end up with the normal force when we put both of these into our calculator. It's minus 44.4 newtons equals zero. So if we add that 44.4 to both sides, that is our normal force. All right, and that is the problem completed. Note here that this normal force 
is not just looking at gravity. It is not just equal to the y component of gravity. It is definitely not equal to the amount of gravity. We have to start at our starting point. There's no, there really are no shortcuts to these problems, but they aren't intended to be very long once we've put the effort into making the free body diagram. So always, always start with Newton's second law and don't try to cut corners because then you will not train yourself on how to handle scenarios when you don't have your notes in front of you and example videos to watch on tests. You need to be comfortable and confident with our full problem solving process. We'll have a couple more examples in this chapter. We'll see plenty of more force problems in chapter five. And so I will see you in those next videos.